Hello, we are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. There are a handful of standard SpaceX updates to kick off this episode, including yet another launch. We'll then see what's been going on over in Boca Chica and with Starship development, including another SN8 static fire. Let's head straight in and get up to date. We were expecting liftoff of Starlink 15 on Sunday EDT or early Monday morning UTC. However, SpaceX tweeted standing down from today's launch of Starlink, Rocket and Payload are healthy, teams will use additional time to complete data reviews. On Monday evening they tweeted, now targeting Tuesday November 24th at 9.13pm EST for Falcon 9's launch of Starlink when weather conditions in the recovery area should improve. On Tuesday evening, Starlink 15 lifted off with another batch of 60 satellites to join the constellation. The booster B1049 also became the first booster to lift off for the seventh time. B1049 then successfully landed for the seventh time on the drone ship of course I still love you setting even more records. All right. And for the seventh time this Falcon has landed. This marks our 61st successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. An article from Spaceflight Now says NASA has submitted a draft agreement for government approval that would allow Russian cosmonauts to begin flying to the International Space Station on US crew capsules next year. With a slight delay, NASA and SpaceX are go for launch of the CRS-21 cargo resupply mission on December 5th. NASA's article says it's to enable additional time to evaluate flight data from Crew-1 and close out certification work ahead of this first flight of the cargo version of Dragon 2. I want to add this in here, Marcus House tweeted about a video he posted on orbital refilling tech. Musk responded with, rapid and complete rocket reuse, low cost propellant, orbital refilling and propellant production at destination are the four essential elements of making life multiplanetary. Also related to making life multiplanetary, everyday astronaut asked Musk, are you actively engineering portable fueling plants yet for Mars? He responded and said, maybe start on that a year from now depends on how Starship progress goes. Over in Boca Chica, last episode we saw some new structures starting to be built at the orbital launch pad. Possibly these are some new bunker kind of structures like we've seen near the suborbital pad. On a tank in the tank farm is a weather station and engineers were seen doing some work on it. In the production area is the high bay which was seen getting some paint recently. Work is also continuing up at the top of this giant building. There's an article posted by the FAA saying they will be doing an environmental review at the SpaceX facility in Boca Chica. This is because the proposed update to Starship Super Heavy Operations falls outside of the scope of the existing final environmental impact statement and record of decision for the launch site. Somebody tweeted the idea and diagrams of extending the tanks to fill the cargo bay for future Starship tanker versions. Musk responded with, not bad, we'll definitely need more engines if we make the cargo bay all propellant but it's probably smarter than a whole new shorter external hull. Looking at some Starship and Raptor updates, another Raptor engine was seen being delivered. This is SM44 and two Merlins were seen riding along with it. The two Merlin engines were not offloaded as Boca Chica is not the place for them. However, after SM44 was taken elsewhere in the yard, another Raptor engine was placed on the trailer. With some pieces of Starship to take a look at, there was a new free ring stack scene moved outside. Also moved outside in the yard, there was a common bulkhead that was spotted. I'm not sure whether it's the same common dome or not, but a common bulkhead was placed on the sleeving mount for a ring stack to be hooked up. The ring stack for this dome was also hooked up to a crane and sleeved with the bulkhead. Inside the nose cone fabrication tent, as ever, there's some new noses currently being constructed. Now we have SN8 which was delayed again slightly with no static fire on Monday and engineers continue to work below the prototype. However, on Tuesday SpaceX started gearing up for the next static fire of this vehicle. 
Then they looked to have performed their fourth static fire and whilst it looked like there were a few pieces of martite that went flying, nothing too bad. Something interesting to point out is it looked like they staggered the raptor engines so they didn't all light at the same time but all three did light. I want to add this, Jack Byer edited all four static fires to compare and I want to point out how short this firing was compared to previous tests. As we were hoping for, Elon Musk went on Twitter and gave the outcome of the test. He said, good Starship SN8 static fire, aiming for first 15km or 50,000 feet altitude flight next week. Goals are to test free engine ascent, body flaps, transition from main to header tanks and landing flip. He was asked by Michael Sheets how he feels about SN8 landing in one piece. He said, lot of things need to go right, so maybe one out of three chance. Following on with, but that's why we have SN9 and SN10. Musk was also asked, what are the minor differences between SN8 and SN9 or 10 that you've mentioned? He responded and said, many small improvements, but overall similar. Wiring is more robust, engines are more mature, and nose cone is sealed better, etc. He also added, major upgrades are slated for SN15. Looking at the road and beach closures again, we did have a testing date today, but it's probably no longer needed. Then, as soon as Monday, we could expect this beast to fly, but they still have Tuesday and Wednesday as backups. We also have some exciting stuff going on with the SN9 Starship prototype. Engineers have continued to work on the nose cone after it had its canards installed and was stacked with the ring stack. As the nose cone gets closer to being attached, the tank has also continued to be worked on. They've also since moved the nose cone into the high bay next to the tank, so soon we should see yet another full-size starship. To finish up the video, we have another cool prototype status overview from Brendan Lewis. This is excluding SN5 and SN6 to only include the active fleet. Below SN8 you can also see 4 snowflakes for cryo tests and 3 fires for static firings which is now slightly out of date. As always thanks to Mary otherwise known as Boca Chica Girl for going out for hours on end every day to film for us fans. Then there's the NASA spaceflight team working behind the scenes providing live streams and other cool space coverage so thank you all too. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX show, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.